Hello, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Talking Trees Day is here. I'm so excited to be here. I am your host, Katie Dubow, and in this interview series, every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, we talk with arborists from across the country answering your top questions. The top questions that you guys are asking, they are answering. But today, we have a special surprise guest. We have two guests for you. Let me go ahead and bring them in. First, we'll welcome Luke Werner. Hey, Luke, how are you today? Good, Katie, how are you doing? I am great. And we also have another guest who's not in Abora culture, um, but we, she is here to help us talk about landscape inspection and curb appeal. So please welcome Karen Hillman from Keller Williams. Hey, Karen. Hey, how are you? I am great. I'm so glad to have you here. I love having guests one-on-one -on -one is wonderful but when we have two guests it's a lot of fun because there's so much engagement so many questions and um well before you ask your questions you want to know what you're asking about the topic of the day is curb appeal why that's why i'm sitting out here on my front porch probably going to be waving to my neighbors wondering what i'm doing out here but we're talking about curb appeal and talking about how it improves your home value how you can do it and some tips but we're also talking about landscape inspections which if you haven't done it and you don't know what it is, you're going to want to stick around because it will change the way that you buy or sell your home. So uh, let me first introduce our guests. We've got Luke, who you are a certified arborist and you've been with Davey now up on 11 years. You told yes. me it's basically since you graduated from school. Mm -hmm. And now you're a district manager in the North Pittsburgh region. So I'm in Philadelphia, so we're on opposite ends of the state. What's your weather like there in Pittsburgh? Ah, uh, last week was pretty ugly. You know, the trees like all the rain, but um, you know, most of the most of the workers don't. But um, today, finally, a little bit of sunshine, um, but still, you know, uh, fifty degrees or so. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, when I tell people who live south south of me that it's fifty, fifty five, sixty, I'm th I'm saying that is nice weather. But they're like, ooh, chilly. I'm like, no, that's <laughs> nice for almost you know may 12th maybe it's a stretch but um and karen you're joining us from ohio you're a real estate expert with keller williams right. and you work in you have a national brand that you work with but you specifically work on eight counties in northeast ohio right true <laughs> in addition to your experience in real estate you've also remodeled what is it seven homes in 15 years yeah <laughs> My family said, if you move one more time. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so I'm really excited to have both of you here to share your expertise. Um, but why don't you who is tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, one of the fun things that we do, Karen and Lucas, have people share emojis of what kind of weather they're having outside. So is it windy? Is it sunny? Is it it's not, hopefully not snowing anywhere where anybody lives right now, but um, tell us what the weather is like. I would give my, I would give a full sun emoji right now, as you can see. There's a beautiful, the dappled sun is an ash tree, if you'd believe it. And my arborist, uh, Jason Gaskill from Wilmington, Delaware, said it's the oldest ash tree, the largest ash tree he's ever seen. So of course we are protecting it and treating it because emerald ash borer, <laughs> it's a terrible pest that's hurting our big trees. Mm -hmm. So yes. um, hopefully it, it comes a little more dappled in, in a minute. So let us know where you're. Oh, we've got a Floridian tuning in. Sunny and 92. Oh, Don't rub it in. <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> I know. Um, so let's jump in. We are. We definitely want to hear your questions out there about curb appeal and selling your home and how the landscape might affect that. So please let us know your questions, but I have a ton too. So let's jump in. And Karen, I'll start with you. Um, is a landscape inspection something that you have, have come across? Have any of your clients asked for them? Is that something that is common? Well, in our area, the when a when a buyer asks for a home inspection, the home inspector will look at the trees and where they're located on the property. They're going to look and make sure that there's nothing that's real close to the house that could be a danger. So, yeah, it's an important part of buying a home for sure. That is so interesting. You know, when I I'll bring Luke back in for this quick story. When I bought this house, um, this is a barn that was built in 1896. So we have a lot of really old trees around us and they're beautiful, but there were two behind us that were clearly uh, hurting, hurting. Their bark was missing in the top 
10 feet of the tree. They were clearly really, really hurting. And um, we had our arborists come in and, you know, certified arborists will do that. Luke, have you had much experience with landscape inspections before? Oh yeah, we do a significant amount of them. Um, you know, both with uh, buyers and sellers. Some um, some buyers want that before they, you know, purchase the home, which is a great thing. And some sellers want it just to make sure that they're doing, you know, their due diligence for the next homeowner. Yeah, and I had never heard of it. So I thought it was this groundbreaking thing that Jason suggested that we do. And lo and behold, I got $5,000 knocked off my, per my purchase price of the home because of these two trees needed to be removed. They needed to be removed, there were power lines. So in the long run, certainly for the seller, knowing that you need to keep up with the trees on your property, you know, mm -hmm. it's certainly something you need to keep up with. But then for the buyer, if you don't get it done, then, you know, it, it's, it, you could be missing or lacking something that could be a problem for you down the road. Yeah, especially for a service that is done, you know, free of charge. Well, that's what I was just going to say. How much does a landscape inspection cost? It doesn't so cost anything with Davy Tree. So we'll we'll come out and you know walk the property, uh, you know, with the potential buyers. I've done a lot of landscape inspections with the buyer and the realtor. Um, I've also done ones just you know on behalf of the the buyer just with the realtor so uh, mm -hmm. you form a lot of good relationships and um, it's something that every potential home buyer and every homeowner should definitely take advantage of well we're getting our first question from denny and i think this kind of ties in what is the best way for a certified arborist to talk with realtors to do pre-buy evaluation. So maybe Karen, I'll throw this to you. Um, for a certified arborist, do you have a relationship with one or would it be your client who makes that relationship? Well, we have Davy Tree right here. So, I mean, it's a it's it's an easy referral for us. So they, they come to all of Northeast, well, they're nationwide, I'm sure. But um, in Northeast Ohio, yeah, that's our go-to. There are several other, in this area, there's a lot of uh, landscaping companies also that um, they may not be certified arborists, so I'm not sure. But yeah, we would call upon Davy Tree. Well, that's an important distinction because just in this story that I was telling about my personal landscape, I got a quote from Davy, which was higher. And then of course they are gonna do their due diligence and get their own quote from Joe Schmo's tree doctor and it was much right. lower. So we were able to meet in the middle, um, but you wanna make sure that you are hiring a certified arborist because that work is so important, whether it be over your house, um, or it just be for your landscape. You don't want Joe Schmo. I don't know if that's a real company name. I don't mean to knock Joe Schmo, but, um, <laughs> so, uh, Karen, for the peace of mind, does an inspection offer, I mean, you talked about a home inspection, which is integral to your, yes. your purchase. Does a landscape inspection also offer that peace of mind to the buyers? It does. Um, there's a lot of lot a lot of things happen that I've run into. A lot of the things that happen is a tree could be planted over a, a pipe, a sewer drain or a drainage pipe that goes out to the street. And you know, back in the 50s and the 60s, we used clay tile pipes, and that root is just going to bust it all up, and all of a sudden you've got a blockage. You can't see that from the road or walking through the house. So it's important for somebody to come out and take a look and let you know if there are potential issues that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, of course, Luke, nobody is um, going to can't guarantee anything. You can't dig up the soil. But mm -hmm. from the arborist side, why do you think that the landscape inspection is really important? I mean, safety um, is always top of mind. That's the, that's the, you know, the one that everybody thinks of. Um, you know, if you have those dead trees that need removed, you know, if you have dead branches or dead limbs that can be pruned out, um, or even as much as maybe some species of trees that, you know, have a little more issues with insects or pests that can be addressed. Right. All of those things, you know, have a cost to mitigate. And if the potential home buyer knows those costs just like you were able to you know negotiate that price off the off the house if it's not just for negotiation it's at least it's, it's a budgeting tool you know for that homeowner moving forward with the time in that home and you know what luke we also um ask for recommendations so if there's areas in the yard where it's it's particularly wet or mm -hmm. you need some ground stabilization that's when we need an arborist advice as well yeah there's a lot of trees you can plant in certain locations that'll It'll help with those, but um, yeah, it's always very, very, very important um, to get that landscape inspection. 
So safety is really important. I think um, Luke also just mentioned that being proactive. So, you know, maybe you don't need that tree removed, but listen, you have an emerald ash borer that I pay $500 a year to treat. So if that's a tree that you want to keep, that's something you need to just incorporate into your budget, just like a homeowner's inspection. Mm -hmm. Karen, I can't think of an equal equivalent, like something in your home, maybe your boiler, or, you know, your boiler or, or a roof. They say, well, your roof is not quite to the point, but in two or three years, you'll need to replace your roof. So, or something like that, right? That would be equivalent in the home that you can just prepare to know that this is something you have to budget for. Yep, yep, and and homeowners typically don't know how to recognize a white ash or a tree that is uh, prone to disease and, and bugs. So having that information and, and recognizing that there might be a problem already so that can be addressed to save the tree is really important too. And the really cool thing, I mean, all of this is cool, but then your arborist can help you identify what trees you have on your property. So many yeah. people don't know what they have on their property. And you can just use your notes in your iPhone. You walk around and just, <laughs> yes, right? Uh, I was going to say Luke should come out, but you're not in the same area. I think we, we know some Davy arborists in Ohio. Um, There's some good ones but, out there. <laughs> yeah. But you you make a note. And so often I've referred back to that note when I, when I call my arborist and say the so-and-so so it looks like it has a pest or even just talking to people around the yard. This is what that is. And so it's really helpful just to get to know the plants on the property that you own. So I think that's really cool. Um, I had a, a question and it just slipped my mind about, uh, but let's talk about curb appeal. So landscape inspections, I think are something that not a lot of people, at least I thought of not a lot of people do it. Karen, is it that common? How, how many people would you say that you've well, now the market is a little different, I'm sure. Right now, it's that does very make hot. a difference. But yeah. honestly, it's a not enough people. Not enough people. You can write in specifically, especially with a, a property that has a lot of trees on it, specifically write in, I want a landscape inspection. If you have a lot of allergies, specifically write in, I want to have a landscape inspection. Because you need to know you're going to move in and be sick because you're aller you don't know how to recognize what those allergens might be for you so and, and bees too yeah you might have a lot of like you mentioned luke your wife is allergic yeah yeah you need to know mm -hmm. what's on the yep. property and yep. we do a lot of you know planting installs you know you set the goals and sometimes um you know someone that has a bee allergy you have to you know get a little bit creative more with you know different color different leaf texture um, you know, to bring that color in versus having flowers are, you know, going to attract pollinators. Well, not enough. I like that answer. So I want to know from those of you out there watching, have you ever done a landscape inspection? I don't think without working closely with my Davy Arborist, I would never have known it was an option. So let us know out there if you have. We have our second question um, from Jennifer. She's asking, we're kind of going into our curb appeal now, but still in the preparedness for getting our house ready to sell. She said, what are some things that homeowners can do to their trees to get the house ready to sell? So we've talked about it from the the perspective of the buyer. You want to make sure that the home that you're moving into is going to meet all of your standards, you prepare, you're safe. What about from the seller's perspective, Luke? I mean, the, the, the biggest things I think of for curb appeal, um, you know, you have the mulching, you have the pruning, and you have the planting. Um, planting is where you can really incorporate a lot of different colors. You get a lot of different flowers. Um, you can get uh, different leaf textures. But, um, you know, you want to, with the mulch, the mulch is the, the quick and easy one that everyone thinks of. I think, you know, if someone rolls up and they're probably going to be looking at the house to buy it. You know, they, again, the first thing they see is, is the landscape. And from my eyes, if I pull up to buy a house, um, you know, I'm sure Karen can, can add to this. But if I see a well-maintained landscape, I'm going to assume that if they're taking care of their landscape, they're also taking care of their home. Uh, I think it just gives you a kind of a warm feeling you know, knowing that you're making a good investment. I love that. So mulch, um, planting, and what was the yeah, third just thing? Aesthetically pruning. Pruning, um, right. Yeah, making sure, you know, these plants aren't totally overgrown. They're not covering, you know, windows and walkways that, you know, I'm sure everybody's walked up to a house where the, the you know, the shrubs are just enclosing on the front door and it's like you're trying to squeeze through and it just, you know, it can kind of dwarf the house. Yeah. 
And when you remember, when you're looking at curb appeal, you're typically looking at it from the street. So oftentimes it's a matter of lifting that canopy up so that we can see the front of your house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. such a good point. Planting in certain ways where you can, you know, you maybe you line a sidewalk with, you know, everybody thinks of boxwoods hedges, but it can also be, you know, perennials or annual flowers, um, you know, especially the smaller plants is a very easy way to, you know, increase that curb appeal without making a huge investment. Well, we have an arborist who just um, does a has said a comment that he's actually done quite a few of landscape inspections. And he says he takes his clients across the street to look at their property, um, which is something, it's so funny. I, I heard that if you love a house, you should buy the house across the street because you never actually look at your house as much as you should. You know, you don't, how often do we stand outside and look at our house? So I, I love that, Denny. That's a great tip. Thank you for sharing that. I think I would add one more thing, if yeah, I could, uh, from the seller's perspective. If you're you're planting trees, one of the things that homeowners are often looking for, particularly in a neighborhood, is privacy. So if you have an opportunity to plant plant uh, shrubs and trees in a place where it's going to provide a little more privacy, that's the way to go. Especially now I see and Karen, I'm so I love trends. I'm so interested in trends and the big trend that we're seeing is with so many people at home. Now you're home working, you need more spaces out back. So a kid zone and maybe a zone for the grandparents, a zone to do your your Zoom meetings. I don't often do Zoom meetings from my front yard. Um, yeah. That's not my right zone, but you need these zones. So privacy is so important. I think it's always been important. But now they say that homes with a good privacy screen or even going faster, which is kind of hard to believe. Yeah. Anything could be going faster than it is. Uh, kind of just sticking with that, Karen, what about conversely? So if you, how can an unkempt yard impact or decrease the chances of a house getting sold? Oh my gosh. I, I tell people all the time, drive by it first, make sure you like it from the outside. <laughs> yeah. If the, if the grass isn't mowed, if it's not, you know, the windows are dirty, the, the flower beds are not mulched and not looking pretty, you know, it makes a huge difference. Uh, you've got to, you've got to make it sparkle outside just as much as inside. Yes. It's so true. I mean, like Luke said, it's the first impression that right. your house makes. So, um, Michael or Mitchell, let me, um, oh, Mitchell, we have a great, Mitchell's asking about jobs at Davies. So we just posted a link to that. So yay, we're getting everybody, maybe we have realtors <laughs> coming in. And uh, so it's a great career, right, Luke? It is. Yeah. A lot of Davy offices are hiring right now. I know. All I know they are. It's where offices are. Yeah, and you get to be an arborist and climb trees and then make Facebook lives sometimes. So, <laughs> yep. so um, let's talk about the investment that you're making in your landscape. And I love the expression, money grows on trees. So in this case, <laughs> with, with curb appeal, money is actually growing on trees, right, Luke? Do you have anything to say about how it's actually improving our real estate value? Yes. So, I mean, there's a few different things you can look at, but, you know, or, you know, does it grow on trees? Maybe not, but does it okay, give you right. Let's get that out there. <laughs> does it give you a, a, a you know a monetary return? It's it certainly does. Um, you know, there's a couple of statistics out there that you know that having a, a tree in the front yard um, that home sells for you know on average over seven thousand more. Um, you put a mature or you get a, a shade tree you know on a proper side of your house where. Is going to you know block the sun a lot and give you a nice shade. It's you're going to save a lot, you know, often fifty percent on your you know air conditioning. Put up some evergreens um, you know, on the west side of your house if you're getting most of the weather from that direction. I have a row of Norway spruce, you know, on that side of my house. It breaks a lot of wind and um, that can save a significant amount on your heating bill. So, you know, there's not um, you know it's an investment that's going to you know pay back with time. It has a great return um, and it's, you know, it's fantastic to look at. It brings people a lot of joy. So if it's something that, you know, can really pay you back, it's, it's definitely worth doing. I love that. And um, Karen, is there anything you wanted to add about the real estate values or things that you have seen? Yeah. From? Yeah. Well, I would, um, I would also add that whatever beautification you do on the outside with plants and shrubs and, and, and living things, uh, think about the maintenance involved before you put that in. 
uh, because buyers are looking at that too. They want to, they, point. they may buy a five acre piece of land, but they don't want to mow more than an acre. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So think about the maintenance involved. It seems most people are looking for lower maintenance properties. That's a great point. Um, has, have you Luke ever come across where you inherit the house? So where the homeowner sells the house and recommends you as the arborist to care for the trees to the new homeowners? Yeah, it happens uh, very frequently. So, um, you know, we do a lot of work for, um, you know, a lot of people and they're, you know, constantly, you know, maybe moving and coming and going, whether we get them at the, at the next house. Um, but it seems like we do get a lot of referrals um, because again, good curb appeal, someone shows up, um, you know, the, the homeowner, the seller says, you know, I'm not taking care of this. Davy Tree does it. You know, ultimately, you're probably going to be the first phone call that they make because it's a very easy transition. Um, we, know, we know the property, we know those trees that they have, we have a history on it. Um, and sometimes it feels really good when you, you know, you go to a property that maybe you weren't even recommended, you know, by the, by the seller. Um, but you're like, yeah, we, we've been taking care of this property for the last six years. And, you know, there used to be a tree here, you know, we planted this a couple years ago. So it, uh, it makes the, the homeowner feel really comfortable. And, you know, it feels good to have that relationship with the property and the homeowner. Yeah, I love that. That that's maybe your point about maintenance, Karen, made me think about about that because I think um listen, the fact is people spend more time inside now. So they don't know necessarily what it's like to care for a tree, to prune their own tree. So having that confidence of if you do have a well landscape lawn, have it be part of your I don't know, Karen, is it silly to have it be part of your disclosures and say, like, I have an arborist care for my tree, I can recommend them or something Absolutely. that shows people that the maintenance is easy. It's an easy turnover. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to you want to let them know the new buyer know that you've been taking care of this property and all of the trees on it. I mean, we are spending actually more time in our yard. That was the number one thing that people spent money on is their yards, creating outdoor living spaces. So, yeah, you want to disclose all of that. Make sure you tell them. It makes a difference. Wonderful. Great. Well, I think I've even seen like home listings before that, you know, in the description, it said, you know, professionally maintained. Yes. Uh, shrubs you know i mean I think when i was looking for my own home i saw that a couple times yeah cool so we've got another question from courtney if my landscaping and front yard aren't taken care of and i want to add to that backyard um, because it's not the first impression so is the front yard the most important would you both say first impression yeah but the backyard's important too <laughs> So well, Courtney, you know, that's not your first impression, right? Right. So, okay. So curb appeal is what we're saying. It's literally the curb. It's not just um, you know, a metaphor. Well, it is a metaphor, but it's the curb appeal. So when someone is either driving up to your home or walking up to see your home for the first time, that is the first impression. And it's, uh, even though I live here, I'm not planning on moving anytime soon. Curb appeal is still important to me. I mean, we can't understate the importance of not just selling your home. You know, I live in a neighborhood. I live in a cul-de-sac and I want to make sure that... I, people, listen, I'm also in the garden industry. So I want to make sure my garden looks beautiful. I want to make sure my trees are well cared for, that my grass is cut. Curb appeal applies to everybody, not just if you're trying to sell your home. So that is important. Um, but Courtney's question is, when we, we address this a little bit, but if my landscaping and front yard aren't taken care of, will it hurt in the selling process? Not Karen, do you want to? Well, in, in this market, I mean, you might not get as much or as many, as many offers as you would if it was manicured. I mean, even if there isn't much done, if you just keep it manicured, keep the lawn mowed, weed wet, weed whip the, the driveway and the sidewalk and plant a few flowers, you know, do a little bit with it goes a long way and make the windows and the outside of the house sparkle, just spray wash them. I think that's a great tip. I mean, I don't think we need to overstate how you don't need to have a full lawn because I, I mean, full garden filled with beautiful flowers that are in bloom in that very moment, but definitely having that first impression, think about how you would want to go to work. You know, yeah. you want to make your best impression, put on your clothes. I know we're all kind of into wearing sweatpants or leggings now, <laughs> um, but you know, it's the first impression of your house. So that's it. It's a good answer. Yes, but the market's so hot right now. Karen's kind of saying right now is a oh my different gosh. time. <laughs> very, very odd, odd times anyway. <laughs> it is. It's the same in Pittsburgh, Luke. It's a, have you heard the chatter about a hot market? Oh yeah, for sure. We've had some people in the office, you know, looking to 
you know, buy or sell. And it's, you know, some of them taking advantage of it. Some of them, you know, that maybe want to you know, worry about, you know, and then the next house or, you know, everything is going fast. Yeah, it is. It's, it's really fast. difficult, but it's great. So don't do it, skip right? the inspections. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Don't skip them indoors or out. I know people right. have made offers that they skip it. And I'm sure you've heard the horror stories about what you find under the ground or, you know, in the basement. True. So Luke, walk us through a little bit about when we talk about curb appeal. Um, you've talked about the three things that you can do to spruce it up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm a pruning, planting a few things, and then mulch, mulch, mulch. Uh, and I have to say, if you've watched the show before, I am an anti-volcano mulcher. So would you quickly walk through everybody on the ways to properly mulch? Yes, yeah, certainly. So, um, you know, mulch is great for trees and shrubs. Um, and it's great because it, you know, it retains moisture, mitigates soil temperature. Um, but since it does retain moisture, you want that over the roots, you know, underneath the canopy of the trees and underneath the shrubs. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to pile it up around the stem. Um, that holds too much moisture around the stem. It can kind of expedite root rot. It can cause girdling roots. Um, you know, it's the number one issue that I see on a property, and it's almost at every single property. So, you know, every time you go out, I just try to educate, you know, individuals on that. But, um, there's just so much that can be avoided by not, you know, volcano mulching. It's not something, you know, mulching isn't something you, you absolutely, you know, have to do every year. Sometimes you can turn it over, you can move it around. If you like that fresh look and that's for you, you know, maybe remove some of it. Maybe put that in a different part of the yard and put new stuff in the front. Um, so it's a different, you know, different ways to go about it, but you definitely don't want to, you know, just throw that four inches on there, pile it all around the stem, um, you're just going to have so many problems down the road. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. So we talked about some safety precautions when you have uh, an arborist out to your home, they're going to prune for safety. Let's just give everyone the right way to plant a tree. So, you know, digging the hole to placement, basically right tree, right place. Yes. So, yeah, you definitely want to start off with that. Um, you know, you don't want those large, you know, specimen trees right up ones are going to be, you know, a little bit farther away, um, you know, put the ornamental trees, you know, a little bit closer to the home. Um, you know, the red buds, the dogwoods, everybody has different trees for their, for their area. Um, but, you know, proper planting, if the person's, you know, going to plant it themselves, they need to know some things, but if you're going to hire, you know, someone to plant it, you're going to bring a baby tree out to do your planting, you know, they're going to make sure that the holes dug, you know, to the proper, proper width, the proper depth, you know, expose that root collar, um, you know, remove the burlap and basket from the tree, backfill with good soil, you know, stake it, put a deer guard on it. Around here in Pittsburgh, you have to have deer guards or, you know, they're Get it. so quick, it's horrible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, right tree, right place, um, it's going to cure a lot of your problems. Before you I plant, love that. Pick up, make sure there's no overhead power lines. Yeah right above you. Um, but even if you want to plant the tree yourself, you know, have an arborist come out, help you talk about different trees, plan where it's going to go, you know, lay it out. Yeah. Davey is there to help. You know, they they want to help you figure it out. Even if you want to DIY. Um, I know this is a big time of DIY and people are doing a ton of projects on their own. So um, have Davey show you how to do it. And then our arborist taught us how to, um, Maybe I shouldn't be saying this on Davey's Facebook. No, but, um, you know, we do an, an annual fertilizer. What is it called? Arbor Green Pro. But um, some pest control on my fruit trees. I want to do it organically. So this is how you can do it yourself. So it's about teaching and educating your customers, not necessarily just selling them a service. So. I'm obviously a happy customer. Um, so, hey, Kevin, thanks for joining us. Denny, back to the volcano mulching, says he tells clients three by three, which is, I've never heard of that, um, three inches deep and three inches away from the trunk. Yeah. Three by three, if you can remember it. Anything that gets people to remember it. I have a shirt that says no volcano mulching, so that's my... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it on, but I have it. So, um, well, Karen, let's talk a little bit about 
your remodeling experience and <laughs> um, yeah, you had, you've had some of it at the beginning. We talked that you've remodeled seven homes in the past 15 years. So talk yeah. to us a little bit about some projects that you have any outdoor projects that you've done. Maybe that's really made an impact. Yeah, definitely. So um, I bought five years ago, I bought five acres of land. So I wanted to put in a garden. Usually when people buy a lot of land, they are likely gardeners. So um, I spent about $1,500 to build a fence because there's deer everywhere here. So I had to build a tall fence That's around it. And so what value does that add? Anybody that's looking at the house says, wow, that's already done. All I have to do, putting raised beds in your garden and on your lawn somewhere where somebody could plant tomatoes or mint or whatever, whatever they like to do. Um, but some of the projects, honestly, that I, that I, um, have done quite a lot is moving gutters away from the house and getting water away from the foundation of the house. Um, I've had to replace a sill plate between the top of the concrete block and where the house is built up above it. We had to jack it up, replace that sill plate in there. Yeah. Um, building patios and replacing sidewalks that are leaning towards the house so that water is draining that way. Um, I have a degree in geology. So groundwater hydrology is like one of my favorite things to to talk about ground but lots water of outdoor. hydrology is not i don't think words that have ever come out of my mouth but um <laughs> but i love it and i think that's so important is you know not just some of those aesthetically pleasing things or some of the expensive like the deer the deer fencing but some practical things like moving water and then you also know that trees and plants can do that for you as well i know davy mm -hmm. does some some davy offices do landscaping yeah. Um, and you know, some cities will actually inspect those pipes from the house for you at no charge. They will, oh. some cities do do that. So check with your city and see what they provide to you for free. Cool. Well, mm -hmm. because I know this is a tree care um, chat, but what about indoors? Has there been one thing that you would say for people that makes the biggest impact, like redo a bathroom or redo a kitchen? Kitchens and bathrooms, 100%. You'll get every dime back. Yep. Cool. I, I can't believe I knew the answer to that, but I guess I've read <laughs> enough about real estate. Yeah. So I, if you guys have any more questions, I have one more question and I know this is a hot market and people are accepting things that they maybe wouldn't normally accept, but in not such a crazy market, should a bad landscape, Karen, I'll ask you first, be a deal breaker? Would it be something that you would walk away from the house because that curb appeal is not great or should we try, even if the curb appeal is not great to look past it? Goodness, no, don't walk away. Unless your arborist says this is this this place is never gonna grow anything. I mean, you could fix that over time. You know, you can take plantings from other people's plantings that you know and plant, right, Luke? You mm -hmm. can do all kinds of great things with it. Oh yeah. You got, a, you got a spot in the yard that isn't growing grass, put some mulch on it and put a flower pot on top of it. <laughs> There's all kinds of things you can do. Yeah, Luke, you agree? Should it be a oh, deal breaker? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I look at things and, and it, I think it's an easy way to increase your home value as well. I mean, if, when I was looking at, at homes, I was, you know, sometimes excited if the outside didn't look nice because it was something that, well, for one, I enjoy it, right? So I, I like gardening. I like that. I like, you know, playing with that. Um, but maybe somebody else isn't going to come in, you know, as high as of an offer and I'm able to, you know, get it at this price and, and create that nice, beautiful landscape. Um, and then reap the benefits of that return later on when I go to sell it. So the landscaping, I feel like can be, you know, it's easily fixed. Whether you And you can change a house on the street. I mean, from a, from a curb appeal mm -hmm. perspective, your house could be the worst house on the street and do some beautiful landscaping. And all of a sudden it's the best house on the street. Yeah. <laughs> Someone once said to me, shutters, this person loves shutters, but shutters are like a good mascara. It's just you put the shutters on and the house pops, just like your eyes pop. Luke, I know you can totally relate to that. Um, oh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's amazing the little things. I think some people, pe sometimes people are intimidated. Um, you mm -hmm. see a kitchen and you think, well, I know a contractor. My friend just redid their kitchen, but sometimes they're intimidated looking at a lawn or a tree that they don't know anything about. And so just know that you've taken it from two experts here. A Bad first impression or curb appeal does not need to be a deal breaker in the home. There are people that can help with that too, or it might be a new passion of yours. You might all of a sudden realize that you love planting or gardening. I know you'll love being under your trees and with your trees because 
I don't need to get into all of the research. Luke shared the research about how much money can grow on trees, but there's so much research about the benefits of trees. So you'll love having that property and that tree. Every tree tells a story. So, um, well, wonderful. I think we have answered everybody's questions. You guys have been incredibly helpful. And I hope that you all have learned that in this process of buying or selling your home, a landscape inspection should be important to you. Something that you add to the list. Safety is a priority, but also knowing what kinds of, you know, proactive things you need to do or what you need to budget for, for the long run. And Davy is all across the country. We'll post a link to where you can find your local office. So there's surely somebody in your region who can help you and come out and help you with that inspection. So I thank you both for your time today. It's been really, really helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Carrie. Thank Fun. you, Karen. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Let's see, I'm gonna throw up this slide and do a little bit of promo because we are not quite done. Don't go anywhere. We are going to be back May 19th. So this is Garden for Wildlife Month. Um, we did talk a little bit about planting some wonderful trees in your front yard, but on May 19th, we'll welcome Adam Baker and he'll talk to us about trees for bees and other pollinators and some top trees that you can plant to support that wildlife in your backyard. You can RSVP right here in a link that we'll share and that will be 3 p.m. Wednesday, May 19th. So we've so appreciated your time and thank you guys for all for joining us. If you want even more information, Davey has a great podcast called Talking Trees available on all podcast apps. And of course, you can find your local arborist at the link that we've posted above. So thank you all so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.